Hello everyone. It's been a while. I haven't made a cooking video in, I don't know, years. The last time I made a cooking video, you saw my beautiful model-like hands. Uh, unfortunately, when I did that, people said, why not show your face and, and share your amazing personality? So I decided to put on my favorite apron that, yes, I bought for myself. Today I wanted to show you how to make spaghetti carbonara. The reason I picked this recipe is because I've gone out to eat multiple times in the Seattle area and I have yet to find a restaurant that makes a proper spaghetti carbonara. Carbonara is a very simple recipe and it's made with very few ingredients. We're starting out with eggs. This is probably the most important ingredient because this is what makes the sauce creamy. And instead of just using say four eggs, I use two full eggs and three egg yolks. Some people make the sauce with just egg yolks, some people use just whole eggs. I kind of combine the two. I believe more egg yolks makes the sauce a little creamier. I'm also using pancetta. I would not recommend using bacon. I think bacon is a completely different meat. It'll make your carbonara taste smoky. We don't want smoky carbonara. Uh, I'm using Pecorino Romano cheese. Every time I have this dish, it seems like somebody's making it with Parmesan. And to me, that just tastes wrong. Romano cheese pairs really, really well with our next ingredient, black pepper. This is an amazing combination. So if you're going to make this meal and you want to make it as authentically as possible, use Pecorino Romano cheese. Last but not least, I have spaghetti. And as with everything, I mean, try to find the best ingredients that you can. Don't just buy the 99 cent box of spaghetti. Maybe try to find one that appears to have some quality. Those are the ingredients. Very, very straightforward and very simple. We're also going to be using some pasta water, but that will come later. The very first thing we're going to want to do is grind up our pepper. Now you might have a pepper mill or maybe you already have pre-ground pepper. That, that'll work just fine. You're going to need a lot of it. I prefer to do it in a pestle and mortar. And the reason I prefer it this way is because it gives you different textures of pepper. You get some nice big chunks, but you also get some really nice fine pepper that will distribute evenly through the sauce. So I'm just going to take a handful of pepper. We're going to put it in here. I probably should move that out of the way. We're just going to start smashing that up. We want to be gentle because these like to jump out. And as we kind of get them to start smashing them down, we'll start grinding away until we get to a consistency that we like. Now it's important not to leave a full peppercorn in here. So make sure that everything is smashed up very, very well. That's kind of the consistency that we wanted. We don't really have a bunch of big chunks, but we have a few. And we have plenty of nice fine grains in there. Just kind of stir it. If you find any full peppercorns, just get rid of them. Smash them up. The next and most obvious step is to boil water for your pasta. When you cook pasta, you want to use a lot of water relative to the amount of pasta that you're cooking. You want to use a very big pot. The reason for this is first of all, it keeps your pasta from sticking together or clumping together. And not that I would know because I'm perfect, but when that happens, it can ruin an entire meal and then people don't want to eat at your house anymore and then you're lonely. Use plenty of water and use a big pot. You can use a smaller pot. Just use a lot of water and keep an eye on it because it might boil over. Once your water starts to boil, add about a tablespoon to a tablespoon and a half of salt. I have this rock salt here. It's perfect for this. Don't add it until the water is boiling. If you add it before the water starts boiling, you're just going to increase the time it takes for the water to come to a boil. So make sure you add this after the water starts boiling, but before you add the pasta to the water. 
Who doesn't love the sound of sirens in the background? Oh, Seattle is such a great city. Once our noodles are in the boiling water, we're only going to have about eight minutes to prepare the rest of our dish. This dish isn't about adding a ton of ingredients to the pot and mixing it all together. This is about simple ingredients, but it's also about timing. The package for the spaghetti says the spaghetti needs to boil for about nine minutes. We're only going to boil it for eight minutes and we're going to cook the pasta in the pan with the sauce for the last minute. So we're going to take our eggs and our cheese. Now, I don't believe you should skimp on the cheese. Don't get stingy with the cheese. So that's probably about a cup. And we're just going to kind of get this all mixed together until it looks something like a sauce. Now we don't want any of these clumps in here so we're going to kind of break them up. I do prefer to use the shredded cheese over the grated cheese because I feel like it kind of melts a little easier and it makes for a smoother sauce, but that's just a personal preference. We're going to whisk this up really, really well. The water is boiling, so now we're going to add the pasta. First, we'll add some salt. We're going to twist it and then we're going to drop it in. And sometimes it needs a little bit of help, but we want to get it pressed down into the boiling water. And we're going to set a timer for eight minutes. I'm going to turn the heat on to medium. And you can see I have a little bit of olive oil ready. I'm just going to add a little bit. We don't need a lot because the pancetta itself is going to release a lot of fat. But we just need a little bit of olive oil to get it started. And it's going to take about six or seven minutes to cook. So we may have to turn the heat down before the noodles are ready. But what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to caramelize this a little bit. We don't want to just lightly cook this. We actually want this to kind of take on a crispy texture. So you can see it's starting to kind of pop and crackle a little bit. You're getting a nice fond on the bottom of the pan. Make sure you turn the heat down. Again, we don't want this to actually overcook. We just want a nice caramelization on the outside of the pancetta. And you can also see, by the way, that it has released quite a bit of additional fat and that's really good because what we're going to do with that is we're going to mix that with the pasta water. The pasta water is going to be starchy and that starchy water is going to emulsify with the fat and create the base for our cream sauce. So our pasta is done and the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to take a nice big spoonful of pasta water we're going to add that to our egg and cheese mixture we don't need the full amount we just need a little bit we're going to whisk that really well and then we're going to take our spaghetti and we're just going to drop it right in on the fat and I'm going to turn off my heat. Let's see, we're just going to add that. And as we add that, we're going to be adding some pasta water. Whoops, look at that. We want to add that in. And I'm about to create a crash. I've not done this on video before. I'm going to add a scoop of pasta water. Get it all stirred up really well. And then add 
our egg and cheese mixture. And we just want that to lightly cook. We do not want that to turn into scrambled eggs. You can see a little bit of it got on the side of the pan. That's going to scramble a little bit. Now if it does turn into scrambled eggs, that's okay. It's still going to taste good. But you can see in here the cream is really good. A little bit of scrambled on the side, so maybe try to keep it off the side of your hot pan. And then the final ingredient is the pepper. And don't be stingy with this either. That Romano cheese and that pepper are gonna go together really, really nicely. We're just gonna toss it all together. You can see I did a really nice job on that cream. Like I said, I splashed a little on the side of the pan and that's gonna happen, so you might get a little bit of scramble. But otherwise, look at that cream. That's exactly what we wanted. And it is, it's just technique, it's timing. So you have to turn off the heat and you have to add the egg as the pan kind of stops sizzling. You want it just warm enough to lightly cook the egg. You don't want it too warm, as you can see, to scramble the egg. It's as simple as that. Now, I can try this just to prove that it's edible. It is edible. It smells really, really good. I might just put this a little bit on a plate. Now normally, you might add a little bit of extra pepper, maybe some extra cheese. And you don't want to serve this with chicken. If you want to add peas, steam them and serve them on the side. I'm going to actually make a quick salad to serve alongside this. But this is good just as it is. And now for the taste test that we already know is going to be delicious. That is a proper carbonara. Thanks for watching my video. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. And uh, have an awesome day.